and launch of the Electricity and Renewable Energy Science Exposition 2020. And, as Aidan hinted, we are in the parish of St. Peter, where heritage is being celebrated as part of the regathering activity. I now ask Mr. George Francis, principal of the Lord Edwards Primary School, to give the word. On the behalf of the Royal Irish Primary, and I say by extension, the schools in St. Peter, I welcome all to the launch of this science exposition. We pray that this morning's launch will be, will be one where in the future, maybe in the next couple of years, we will see children who are here present, not just the secondaries, but you primaries here from all scenes, the one from Roland Edwards, becoming the scientists, maybe even finding some other source of renewable energy, whether it is that you have to go to Mars, to the moon, wherever, but that you will be the ones to step forward, not just through this exposition, but when you get into secondary school, to make life easier for us. So this morning, as we sit here, Whatever happens, let it be that as we move forward, that we will say from Roman Edwards Primary, from the parish of St. Peter, that we make the effort and we take the initiative to move this parish, this country, this region, even the world, forward in renewable energy. We welcome you here and we ask that God's blessing be on this launch this morning and also to Say thanks to those who made the decision to have this launch at this school and for the Barbados Lightning Power for being the sponsors. Thank you again. Welcome to Roland Edwards School. And may this be indeed a cherished, cherished moment in your life. And now invite the Chief Media Resource Officer, Mr. Berkeley Blue, to give open remarks. Good morning. As you will have heard before, this is the fifth year that the Media Resource Department and the Barbados Lighting Power will have partnered to present this Electricity and Renewable Energy Exposition. And we are happy to be launching it here in the north of the island. This school, sometimes we say the north is forgotten. I heard once they say that uh, the north is behind God's back, but you only put people that you trust behind your back. So it's good to be here. Also, we would like to be celebrating with um, your school. We celebrated 30 years. Now, this annual competition, sponsored by the Barbados Lighting Power, is a great opportunity for students to learn by investigation and exploration. Now, at the Media Resource Department, we are always keen to develop and share resources to enhance the teaching and learning experience in order to fulfill the goal of the Ministry of Education, which is to provide a quality education for all. This goal can only be achieved if we have commitment and support by all stakeholders, and that is the private stakeholder, the teachers, students, parents, and guardians. The Barbados Lighting Power, in its drive to be a good corporate citizen, must be applauded for its efforts in promoting not only safety as a way to work and learn, but also for the collaboration between private and public partners to ensure a better learning environment for students. Now, every year for the last five years, Barbados Lighting Power has facilitated seminars for teachers interactive demonstrations for students in the primary and secondary school, as well as daily tours of the solar water plant at Trent St. Lucy for both teachers and students. Activities such as these provide opportunities for you, the students, to gain a greater understanding of the wonders of electricity and how it affects our daily life. From night to morning, from morning to night, Electricity plays a significant role in what we do, from the preparation of our meals, the cleaning of our clothes, the way we work and play, and in our education and how we communicate. We are all fussy about our smartphones, 
when we go on to YouTube and WhatsApp, electricity is powering all of that. Now, it takes many hands to ensure that an event like this is successful. So you, the students, I want you to work hard on your projects while expanding your minds. The teachers and the parents and guardians who guide you and support you as you bring these projects to fruition. And the officers from the media resource department, sometimes the back home people don't get an opportunity to be mentioned, but I want to say here private, um, publicly that they do a very good job at coordinating and administrating the, to ensure the smooth running of this exposition from the launch, which is happening here today, on, as we go to the Presbyterian ceremony, which will most likely be at the Barrios by the Power Headquarters. Now, what we hope that all of you will be submitting some entry to this exposition, we know that not all of you will. But the Media Resource Department has programs that you can participate in. So everyone can be included in what we do. Aristotle said that the roots of education are bitter, but the fruits are sweet. Well, I'm not going to debate that right now, but what I can tell you is that when you find your passion, learning is fun. Thank you. Another point is Jackie Marshall Clark. Manager of Communications and Government Relations for the Barbados Light and Work Company to offer remarks. Good morning, students. Good morning. Thank you for having us here. And good morning, teachers as well. And principal and all the others. Thank you for having us here this morning. So the Electricity and Renewable Science Exposition is coordinated by the Media Resource Department of the Ministry of Education and sponsored by the Barbados Light and Power Company, and it is in year five. And for us, each year it gets better in one way or another. The school projects, we have noticed, are becoming more thoughtful, more innovative, and more elaborate. The students are becoming more aware, more knowledgeable, more involved, and more independent in constructing their project. And this means there is more ownership and we welcome that because Barbados is on a path to 100% renewable energy by 2030. And we are happy to support this national initiative, but better yet, we are happy to be able to create some excitement around the use of renewable energy sources in Barbados. Our partnerships in this project are also getting better. Let me explain. At Light and Power, Employees are very involved in this science exposition. We have linemen with trucks and equipment for school demonstrations, and if you haven't had one yet, ask. And they come up to help the students understand the product of electricity and how to work with it safely. We engage our engineers who work with the schools and with you, the science teachers, to provide advice and direction on the science projects as needed. Other employees are judges, safety presenters, speakers, tour guides, subject matter experts, persons at all levels and from all across the organization are involved in this electricity and renewable science exposition. And here's the good news. Emera, our parent company in Canada, they have taken note of this project and last year, the Science Expo was featured as one of the flagship projects for sustainability across the group of companies. <laughs> then, there are our partners in education. So first, you, the students, who continue to work very hard, and here at Golden Ever Spring Week, you have been consistent every year with your projects and with your participation and good work comes from this school, we congratulate you. The science teachers are already uh, on board and ready to work with the students. The school's principals, we met with them last October, including your principal, Mr. Francis, to ensure that they were on board, and they are. The Ministry of Education, Technological and Vocational Training, and the, the Parliamentary Secretary, Dr. Ronald Springer, is here with us again today underscoring the ministry's commitment to the Expo. We 
Senior Resource Department, for whom we work to reach all the schools across Barbados. They remain an excellent partner for us at Light of Power. And yes, the parents are on board as well. And in addition this year, the Minister, the Honorable Santia Bradshaw, has expressed her willingness to be a part of the 2020 Science Exposition Project with all her schools. So thanks to all of you for that. And then, over the years, we have been supported by several organizations in Barbados. The Barbados Renewable Energy Association, BRIA, for one. The Caribbean Energy Lighting, the Future Centre Trust. And this year, we recognize that electrification in Barbados and electric vehicles are becoming a big thing. And so this year, we have already asked the leading engineer in that project at Light and Power to be a part of us and to be on board with this science exposition and we will extend the partnerships in that area during the period. So I want to share something else. From the inception of the Electricity and Renewable Science Exposition, our objectives were to reach primary and secondary schools, both government and private, with a project of interest. We believe we have done this to build an understanding and an appreciation for the value of electricity, and we believe we have done this too. And to generate interest in renewable energy and alternative sources here in Barbados. So while we believe that we have met these objectives over the years, Light and Power will continue, because I heard you mention it this morning, we strive for excellence. And sometimes if you ask us how we work, we say that we seek a continuous improvement every day and we are tenacious in our pursuit of creative solutions. Therefore, for the Science Expo for 2020, we intend to up the tape. <laughs> Looking for even more success this year. So over the years, we have had 35 schools participate in over 75 projects. Our aim this year is for more schools. With prizes and rewards valued at $25,000 each year, won by students and schools, we will be adding more participation awards this year, and we have opened an individual category for students who want to enter on their own. Overall, the Electricity and Renewable Science Exposition Project represents for us at Lightning Power an investment of over $200,000 in the education system in Barbados. I want to tell you about this one. One notable achievement for us, and we've spoken about it quite a bit, is young Dwayne Archer. Dwayne first entered the Electricity and Renewable Science Expo in 2016 as a student of the Coleridge and Paris School. He entered with his Hydro Electricity Generation Project and placed third that year. And that motivated him to enter again. And then in 2019, he entered as a student of the St. Michael's School. And he was also considered, or they were considered, outstanding by the judges. Well, now, Duane has commenced studies at the Memorial University, Newfoundland and Labrador, Canada, with the goal to gain a degree and gain expertise in this growing field of renewable energy. This is indeed noteworthy. Thank you. 
before we go that at Legend of Power, we can always I welcome to the stage the students of the role of Edwards Primary School who will be performing for you a rhythm poem.
Now, perhaps like some of the persons who have spoken this morning, I'm no stranger to you. Because you will recall I spoke to you last week, Monday. And I challenge you to look at your future, especially 10 years from now. And this morning, Mrs. Marshall Clark has spoken about the 2030 agenda. She would have alluded to it. And lastly, I would have asked you where do you think you would be in 10 years. Now, most of you, being 10 years old, will be 15, 21. I, I see some, some secondary school children here. Maybe 25, maybe 26. But the question I have for you this morning is in 10 years from now, what kind of jobs do you think you'll have? And before you even think the answer, I want to remind you that a lot of things have disappeared over the years. Certainly in the last decade, we have seen the disappearance of some professions, some jobs. And in the next 10 years, you will see the creation of jobs and that you cannot, at this point, imagine. So in 10 years time, jobs will be different. Certainly, the type of vehicle that you drive will be different. We have seen a lot of electric cars on the road, and that may become more of a, 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 a feature on our roads, because we are moving in the direction of you know, forms of, of, of fuel and the use of renewable energy. Basically what we want to do is stop the use of hydrocarbons. Now hydrocarbons are used in fuels such as diesel and gasoline, but it's also used to make plastic bags and other synthetic materials like polyester and so on and so forth. Now we do not want to end the industry in Barbados, but we don't want to use plastic bags or single-use plastics in Barbados because what they do, what does single-use plastics do to, um, to our marine Like What do they do? Like you see one high up? Uh huh, and they kill our, our turtles. Yes, they find their way into the water and they are killing our turtles. Right now, we have one main power source in our country that's harvest and power. We want to move away from that way, persons, individual persons can generate their own power by use of, in most cases, uh, solar energy to generate your own power and to store your own power. And we want to create Barbados as a regional center of excellence for our renewable energy research and development. Now these goals can only be achieved if we understand. And if you as young people understand the role that you have to play in making this dream a reality. Now I want to focus this morning on the idea of creating a regional center of excellence in renewable energy research and development. And this either has the ability to become that center. But that going to rest on your shoulders. We have the minds, we have the skills, and we have the determination to achieve this goal. And so this opportunity given to our students to explore, research, and create is very much welcome at this time. And that's why we appreciate the efforts of the Barbados and Power in this regard for collaborating with the Ministry of Education, Technology, and Vocational Training, as well as the Media Resource Department in this timely and, and critical initiative in helping us to achieve this very important goal in the next 10 years or so. Now the learning that takes place when you participate in the exposition such as the one being launched this morning is not, it's, it's more than just learning about science. This type of exposition will allow you to be engaged in researching, reporting, and, and displaying your ideas. So you would have seen in a little bit of quick small children such as yourself at other primary schools across Barbados reporting and presenting their experiments right there for the world to see and for Barbados to see. I personally went to the SJPA Samuel Jackman Preston Institute of Technology and I walked, I saw those displays. I was very impressed with what was coming out of our primary schools. And from all indications, I believe that our future 
is great in this particular regard. Now, such expositions will challenge you to go above and beyond what is typically, typically required of you in your normal school projects. As Ms. Marshall Clark said, you have to up the thing. It will draw upon your interpersonal skills. It will draw on your rhetorical skills. It will draw on your observational skills. And these are basically, these are just big words, but basically what it says is that it's going to draw on your, your ability to work with one another. Work with your, your classmates. Work with your friends. It's going to draw on your ability to speak and present and articulate what your project is about. And that's basically what those children were doing. If they can do it, believe me, each and every one of you here this morning can do it, but they're no different from you. And it's going to draw on your skills to observe things and fix things as you see them and challenges as they, uh, uh, as they arise. It will develop your critical thinking skills, and this is your ability to reason. Your ability to make logical connections between two areas of, of argument or ideas. To engage in independent thinking, you have to learn to think for yourself. It's important that you learn to think for yourself and not just be guided or not just go by what you see, but take things uh, uh, at face value, as people say. And it also helps you to develop your collaborative skills. And these are basically the behaviors that you have to engender to work with somebody to get your process. You have to work with other people. In order to make the dream work, there must be some form of teamwork. So always remember that. You have to learn to work with your friends if you want to function and you want to have a successful outcome. And these are the skills, these are some of the soft skills that we, that we advocate. These are the skills that you're going to need for the future. You'll have heard, if you've not heard about it, you'll hear about it at some point. Skills for the future, soft skills, those marketable skills, those problem solving skills, these are just a, a few of your skills. You're going to need those things if you're going to be productive persons going forward. So as I close this one, to remind you as a nation, we are committed to these goals and to the 2030 agenda that was alluded to by Mrs. Uh, Marshall Clark. We want you, the students, to know that you have a role to play in this agenda from recycling and reusing waste to conserving water and to protecting the environment. I was glad to see the little skit this morning, a little uh, dramatization, which was very impressive. We really talked about, about cleaning up, keeping our country clean. We understand we here at this very tender age how important it is to ensure that we keep our business clean. That we don't litter. But more than this, your ideas on how we can move forward, your ideas on renewable energy, how we can use it effectively in this island, your research and your experiments in helping us to keep our group, our, ourselves globally relevant are what we must anticipate from you. So we expect some fascinating work from you. We see you not only as future scientists, but basically we see you as future as scientists today. Right now, even as I speak, I look upon you, I see young scientists within the, 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 the auditorium, within the crowd. I can see young, you may not see it yourself yet, but believe me, when your teachers grow into your, into your skill set, you will see that some of you are already young scientists. So the world of 2030, that world is awaiting you. We as adults, we are awaiting you as well. So I want to encourage you to accept the challenge to forge ahead into the future with a renewed sense of purpose and to help this country meet its 2030 agenda of 100% renewable energy. And I thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Thank you so much, Senator Springer. Now Malcolm X said, and I quote, education is the passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today.
many ways to save electricity. Anyone can do it, it's no impossibility. All we need is a little ingenuity. Saving electricity is just like saving.